Hello and welcome to Mark in the Park, the program where we tell you what's going on at Urbana Park District. As always, Urbana Park District, you belong here. I'm Mark Schultz and we're glad to be joined today by Janet Sosby, Community Program Manager at Urbana Park District. How are you doing this great day? I'm doing awesome. All right, and we're here to talk about Neighborhood Nights approaching its 30th anniversary. First of all, what is Neighborhood Nights? Neighborhood Nights are concerts in the park that we do in all our neighborhood parks. A lot of people know about Meadowbrook Park and they know about Crystal Lake Park. These are concerts that are in all of our neighborhood parks, which are parks that you don't necessarily have a parking lot at, there's no bathrooms, and they're neighborhood parks that a lot of people don't know about. So we do a concert in 11 different parks throughout the summer. So it's a way to let the neighbors know, hey, you've got a really nice Urbana Park District Park here, plus have a little fun. Yes, and we do, it is interesting, we have people that are in the neighborhood, you see lots of people walk in, but then we also see lots of people that come to every single concert. So we have people that drive into the neighborhood, so it's a nice mix of people who live in that neighborhood, and then just music lovers who come to every single free thing with live music. Really? Yeah. So they got a lot of music lovers in Urbana that come We to really do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's fantastic. So you kind of said it a little bit, but what is the overriding goal of Neighborhood Nights? I think the goal is to bring people out to the park, obviously, is to get people to know the park, get people to know us that work at the park district. Every Neighborhood Night, recreation staff are there, um, the foundation is there. So they get to meet the people that work in the park district, they get to see their neighbors, uh, lots of dogs come out, so people bring their whole family, picnics, and then just to enjoy live music. It's really one of the things that I love most about my job is getting to uh, work with all the musicians. And if you have an issue about one of the parks or have a suggestion about one of the parks, boy, that's a great time. You will you can uh, have the ears of uh, an Urbana Park District staff member. Exactly, yes. It's a, it's a great way to interact with the staff. And then also our foundation and our executive director comes to every single neighborhood nights. That's fantastic. And have you ever gotten good feedback from the, uh, good or constructive <laughs> feedback from the uh, public about parks? You know, I think we do, and we, we take this opportunity a lot of times if we're going to build a new playground or if we're going to add a new feature to a park, we'll have displays, we'll have interactive things where, like we might do a little sticky dot exercise where the kids can put dots on the pieces of equipment they like best. It's really a good chance for people to find out what's coming up in their park, what improvements are happening, and we get lots of people who are really pleased with us, and they come they come all the time. and. You know, they'll bring kids throughout the years. I mean, I've been doing this for 20 years, so it's pretty exciting to see the kids grow up and throughout time and, you know, really use their park in different ways as, like, they start out as little toddlers and then, you know, they're at Larson Park playing tennis while the band is playing. Now, neighborhood nights occur in the summer every Wednesday night, yes, correct? Yes, yes. Okay, very good. And uh, where can people go online to see a... Uh, a schedule of where the next neighborhood night's going to be. Oh, there, uh, I, I think we have, well, obviously it's in our program guide, so mm -hmm. on the urbanaparks.org, if you go to the program guide in the special events section, you can see it there. We also have flyers everywhere, we'll have the schedule, and then one thing that we always do is we actually hand deliver a flyer to the entire neighborhood before the concert. So we kind of look at a map of the park and we highlight the streets that like touch the park and that are closest, and then our interns hand deliver a flyer that says, hey, come Coming up on Wednesday, here's a concert coming to your house, and then it'll have the full schedule of all the other neighborhood nights. And we'll flash the schedule up on the screen for people to see. But uh, you go out to the people. You 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 knock on the doors before the neighborhood. Oh nights. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a great it's a great chance to meet people then too. And and a lot of times, I'm always surprised. And I've delivered flyers myself too over time. I'm surprised how many people are like, we're having a concert. Uh huh. Yep. Yep. <laughs> That we do it every year. <laughs> just down the block. Yes. Yes. Janet Sosby is our guest. She's Community Program Manager at Urbana Park District on this edition of Mark in the Park, and we're talking about Neighborhood Nights. Now, with Neighborhood Nights, um, you don't book an Elvis act from Vegas oh, no. or, or, or any, you know, this isn't the chance to see Garth Brooks, <laughs> but... Uh, now, that would be a neighborhood night. Right I can't there. imagine the budget for that. <laughs> but uh, you have a chance, and there's a chance for local musicians to display their talent and share their talent with the community. Uh, why is it important to uh, book the local artists? Well, I think it's really important um, that we 
pay musicians. You know, it is a free concert. You know, it's it's a it's a very um, low budget event. These are small, like nice little events, and they're um, and it's and it's it's changed now. But when we used to do neighborhood nights, that was when the only place you could see a band was in a bar. Mm. And and of course you could smoke in bars then. So a lot of people were looking for a place that you could see a band in a more family friendly atmosphere where there wasn't smoke, where there wasn't alcohol, and it was um, you know there. I don't want to use the word wholesome because that brings up a you know a certain sort of image, but it really was a setting to hear live music. And we, I think it's really important to support local art. And I you know I do that myself with my heart. You know we we go to art fairs and purchase local art and and our musicians are artists too I mean a lot of some of these musicians this is how they pay their bills like they they do other jobs but you know they're primarily a musician and this is a great way to support local artists who are musicians and so we feel really strongly that you know it's a neighborhood concert it's by Urbana Park District we want to pay local musicians now is there a goal in mind when you are uh, booking the musical acts do you t touch on a wide variety of musical taste you don't just say uh, we're just going to do this genre right well we do try to really mix it up you know we look at the park and the size of the park some parks are like the place where we play is really small and it'd be like a, a much more intimate setting and so we do like a bluegrass act where it's mostly mm -hmm. acoustic something like that but then we have you know Meadowbrook Park where we do it in the big open space behind Prairie Play where we've got like a big giant area and then we have the Surreal Deal who they play 70s jam music they play mm -hmm. Grateful Dead the Allman Brothers they play Beatles so they've got a Dude. big yes <laughs> the, and there's th that's always our last show. We'll uh -huh. get we can get 500, 600 people at that concert. Wow! A regular neighborhood night is like 200 people. Mm -hmm. So it's a it's a smaller, intimate scale. We have blues, we have oldies, country, we've got uh, Americana, we've got funk, we've got jazz, we've got like uh, 60s, 70s pop, we've got bluegrass. We've got 90s uh, R&B and uh, hip hop, and then we've got the surreal deal. So we've kind of covered, we try to cover all the bases. That's fantastic. So something a little bit for everybody. Yes, for sure. Now, what else is there to do at Neighborhood Nights? Uh, I mean, you're going to get a great concert no matter what. Right. But uh, what else uh, can people do there? Okay, so free popcorn and lemonade. Mm -hmm. Popcorn made by yours truly. Very good. Yes, popcorn lemonade. Um, we'll have the nature play table. So we'll have like um, the kinetic sand and we'll have natural pieces like loose mm -hmm. objects that the kids can play with. Um, that kind of ties into the Friendship Grove uh, nature playscape. So mm -hmm. we'll have staff from there that will interact with the kids. Um, we'll have, you know, obviously an information table where they can get all sorts of information on park district programs. The city of Urbana comes out and has a very big table with lots of um, information about all the city resources. Um, I'm presuming our sponsor will have a table? Yes. Yes? Okay. Yes, uh, OSF... Um Healthcare is sponsoring neighborhood nights this right. year. Which so, is exciting. Yes, very have. exciting. And then um, sometimes the library comes to certain neighborhood nights. Sometimes mm -hmm. uh, regional planning comes to certain neighborhood nights. Um, we do bring out bubbles and toys for the kids. So there's there's lots of fun stuff to do. Yes, and we do want to mention too that OSF Healthcare is our uh, sponsor for Neighborhood Nights this year. And this is uh, very exciting to, uh, to have a partnership with a new neighbor in yes, Urbana. Yes, exactly, yeah. So, um, so it sounds like a lot of connections can be made at these Neighborhood Nights. A chance to network in the neighborhood and maybe get a uh, question answered that, oh, for uh, real, yeah. that you're looking for. Now, um, the neighbors. I know there's some that's like, turn that music down. <laughs> but do you, have you gotten a lot of good feedback on up for neighborhood nights? Uh, yeah, I, I think a lot of people come out and um, they enjoy what the park district does. And a lot of times they'll ask us questions about swim lessons or the pool or like other programs or, you know, renting the pavilion in the park that we're at. And, and um, I think, I don't think, I've, I mean, like I said, I've been doing this a long time. I don't think I've ever had anyone complain about, you know, the loud music or, I don't, well, you know, good. we try to, we try to keep it, you know, not like where people's windows are shaking, and <laughs> like plates are falling off the <laughs> shelf or something like in the house next door, so. Well, that's good. And the music doesn't go all night. So no. what's the timetable for a neighborhood night? 6.30 to 8. And that, you keep 
on that schedule. Yes, right I away. do. Yeah, I told you good. that. Yep. So yeah, you keep it six thirty to eight, and uh, so Kitty's bedtime is not uh, in the summertime. Is yeah, it's disturbed. kind of perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So um, now we're in the Midwest. We've got thunderstorms. They exist. What happens uh, if the weather's looking a little iffy for a neighborhood nights? Uh, how do people figure out if it's still on or not? All right, so we have the Park District's rain outline where they can call. They can also call the Phillips Center because we're open until 6, so we'll have an idea by then. We try to make a weather call by 4.30. Mm -hmm. we, this, what, you know how crazy the weather is. If I can work with the band and push it to 5, that gives us, enough, you know, the, the longer, sometimes we can wait. You know how those storms will be heading towards us, and then they, like, break apart and go mm -hmm. around Champaign-Urbana. Mm -hmm. They go above and below Champaign-Urbana. So that happens a lot. So, you know, I work with the band, and I'm watching, like, three weather sites at once, and we're just kind of, like, waiting to see what's going to happen. And sometimes at the Nature Center, it'll be raining, and at Meadowbrook Park, it won't. So it's not necessarily, yeah. like, town-wide. So we really do keep an eye on it. And then we share it on social media, we'll tweet it, we'll put it on Facebook, and we'll have it on our Park District website. And then obviously the Rain Outline app, if people have that, I use it um, for myself to find out when the pool's closed. It's really handy to have. So that's how we let people know. And then the concert will be the next night. Okay, so the, so the rain date is the Thursday, the right. next day. Which is probably the hardest thing about booking a band is that not only are you asking for a band to like save one night for you, you're asking them to give up other gigs on a night when they might not use it. So every mm -hmm. band agrees to both be available Wednesday and Thursday. Does that make it hard to recruit these bands? Sometimes. But uh, you're, you've got a full card, though. Well, that's, you know, there are so many good bands. I mean, mm -hmm. it's... I don't even have to really try that hard. It's not like I'm out scrounging out for bands. Mostly it's like Good. talking to people and trying to be like, well, they've played for the last four years in a row. We'll give them a break this year, and then we'll get somebody new. And mm -hmm. speaking of that, I've got yes. four, oh, four new groups this year for Neighborhood Nights. Um, some of them are new to the Park District, like completely. They're um, groups that I've not booked before, and one of them is called Love Sign. Mm -hmm. um, and they do like classic, modern rockabilly, country mm -hmm. favorites, and then um, the other band that's brand new to the Park District is Recasto. So they're a funk group, and both of those groups I was lucky enough to see play Friday Night Live in downtown Champaign that 40 North does, their Friday night concert. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of my rule when I book a band is that I have to have seen them played live mm -hmm. in order to be like, yes, you'll, you know, mm -hmm. um, uh, that's so your own little music critic. Well, not really. I just <laughs> want to make sure that, the that you know, because I really do like all kinds of music. Mm -hmm. And so every one of these groups is somebody that I actually really enjoy. But I just want to make sure that, you know, we had one time many years ago, we had a group send us a cassette tape. That's how long ago it was. Uh -huh. <laughs> send us a cassette tape. Uh -huh. And then they sounded great. But then the group that showed up at the park to play was not the same players on the cassette tape. Oh, boy. Not that great. Uh-oh. So, uh, <clears throat> so you see them in person before yes. uh, before they sign the dotted line. Yeah, and then um, Church Street Ramblers and Wildwood String Band. Uh, Wildwood String Band has played Strawberry Jam for us before, so that was a they're a really awesome bluegrass family group. They've got uh, two girls that have the most wonderful harmonies. They're really really good. Oh, fantastic! That sounds like a fun night too. Yeah. And again, uh, we're it's in the neighborhood guide. Uh, or the program guide yeah. for Neighborhood Nights, and also at urbanaparks.org. And again, we'll flash uh, uh, that up on screen and also um, um, make sure the schedule is up here Good. at uh, Mark in the Park. Now, are there any specific rules uh, for Neighborhood Nights? Uh, anything you want people to remember, you know, like coolers or bring your own grill or anything okay. like that? Okay. Well, we just follow all the rules for, for the parks. Mm -hmm. And so obviously there's no alcohol allowed in the parks. Um, you can't drive your car up on the grass. Um, mm -hmm. and girls are allowed as long as you take your charcoal out with you. I've I don't think I've seen anyone bring a grill to neighborhood nights, but mm -hmm. I have seen some pretty fancy picnics. Uh -huh. Like with the elevated tables, and I've seen lanterns. or ca It's like a little tiny mini Ravinia. I've seen candles. Wow. Like salad bowls and, you know, like full, like an actual full dinner. And then some people stroll in with a Little Caesars $5 pizza mm -hmm. and share a slice with me. Yay. So <laughs> it's, yeah, a lot of people bring dinner with them. They bring a blanket. They bring their chairs. Um, 
yeah, I think chairs is probably the biggest thing that everybody brings in. A few people just kind of come in and plop right down on the grass, but most people bring their camp chairs with they them. They really make a night of it. They really do, yeah. And like I said before, dogs on leashes are welcome. So, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people bring their pets out to the concerts too. All right. So if there's one thing that you want to leave our viewers with as far as neighborhood nights, what do you want them to know? The, what's the most important thing about neighborhood nights? I think like uh, what we talked about before is that it's quality live music in a beautiful setting. I mean, I these neighborhood parks, some of them are like little hidden gems that a lot of people don't know about. Um, so it's a really great opportunity to you know, enjoy the night. Hopefully it's not 99 degrees out and, you know, there's a nice breeze and there's live music and it's just a really enjoyable evening and we do it every week. So if you miss one, there's going to be another one. It's just a great summer pastime. Janet, thank you so much for your time. Yes. And uh, we'll be seeing you out in the neighborhood. You will. I'll for, be there. For neighborhood nights. Janet Sosby, uh, Community Program Manager, has been our guest for this edition of Mark in the Park talking about neighborhood nights all summer long. It's a fantastic chance for you to go out and see Urbana Park District parks, maybe some parks that you didn't even know existed. Have fun with your family and hey, listen to some great music. Again, thanks for uh, watching Mark in the Park this week and always remember Urbana Park District, you belong here. I'm Mark Schultz. Thanks for joining us. <music>